In this lesson, we will construct another tool that is used to graphically look at a set of data. The tool that we'll construct in this lesson is called a frequency polygon. The construction of a frequency polygon is almost identical to the construction of a histogram. The data that we will use to construct our frequency polygon consists of the following. The data comes from the 2000 U.S. Census. The data lists the median household income for each state in the United States and the District of Columbia in the year 1999. This data has been summarized into this frequency table. Recall the very first step in constructing a histogram from a set of data is to construct a frequency table. This frequency table was actually constructed or formulated in the video named histogram. So if you need to go back and review how to form a frequency table, go back and look at the histogram video. That video uses the exact same data set that we are using here to construct the frequency polygon. We want to use this frequency table to construct our frequency polygon. Here we have the histogram that corresponds to this frequency table. In a frequency polygon, however, we do not have the bars like we do in a histogram. So we are going to change our histogram to a frequency polygon. Instead of graphing a bar over our first class, we put a dot corresponding to a frequency of 1 from our first class at the midpoint of our class. Our second class had a frequency of 9. So above the midpoint of that class, we put a dot. Our third class had a frequency of 12, so over the midpoint we put a dot at 12, a dot at 14, a dot at 10, a dot at 4, and a dot at 1. We want to get rid of the histogram bars because our frequency polygon does not contain those bars. Now we connect each of the points. Our frequency polygon is almost complete. Every frequency polygon has to start at zero and has to end at zero. So how do we do that? We start our frequency polygon at the midpoint of the class that would be directly to the left of our lowest class. So here we would have $22.5 thousand dollars and our frequency polygon ends at the midpoint of the class directly to the right of our greatest class. That would be at $62.5,000. Now we connect this point and this point and our frequency polygon is complete. The frequency polygon has the advantage that between our two midpoints of different classes it appears that the increase from a frequency of 1 to a frequency of 9 occurs gradually. In the histogram where we have bars it appears that the, there is an abrupt change from a frequency of 1 to a frequency of 9. The frequency polygon smooths that out a little bit and makes the change from between two different classes more gra gradual than the histogram. Just like the histogram, we cannot get the actual data set back from a frequency polygon. In summary, the construction of a frequency polygon is identical to the construction of a histogram. The only exception is instead of putting bar, making it a bar graph as in a histogram, we put our frequency, our count for each class at the midpoint of each of our classes. Then we connect each of those midpoints to form our frequency polygon.